Join me here in the tropical nurseries at Kew, which are usually closed to the public, but that are open for special tours this weekend. Now we know, don't we, that Kew Gardens has some of the most beautiful and exotic plants in the world. But there is a secretive tropical nursery that is normally closed to the public, which houses some of the rarest and strangest species. But this weekend, visitors will get a chance to glimpse inside. Alice Bandakravi can tell us more. Well, this is not what it seems. It looks like a tree. It's actually a leaf of the, let me get this right, Amorphophallus titanum from Indonesia, here in the tropical nursery at Kew Gardens. And it's not at Kew Gardens as we know it. These are the nurseries, the places where the plants are nurtured and grown. In a small part of southwest London, there's a tropical paradise. It's home to some of the world's smallest, rarest and most endangered plants. Plants which might save your life and plants which might take it if you're an insect. This is um, Catharanthus, or the common name is Madagascan periwinkle. And I get asked a lot, what's the point in conservation? Why should we save plants? And I think this is a great example of it because this plant treats childhood leukaemia. They've taken compounds of the plant and they use that within the treatment. This is a really exciting plant and this is really what Q is all about because this plant was thought to be extinct in the wild 40 years ago and then amazingly someone found a bit of it and that was sent here and we were able to grow that plant on. So how long did it take to get from the sample to actually being able to get the seed and grow it again? It took, it took 30 to 40 years. That's an amazing success story. We're still discovering new species all the time. And if you, if you don't discover them and name them, then we could just lose those. We could lose those plants. You know, they have to be named to be saved. And then, and then we conserve them. And then we can potentially bank them into the Millennium Seed Bank. So they're banked for life. There are more than 70 plants here that are extinct in the wild, so horticulturalists take great pains to preserve them and give them optimal conditions. The public gardens at Kew show you the finished product. It's behind the scenes where the pioneering work takes place. The Science Festival this weekend will open the doors to small groups so you can share in the discovery too. Well, here to tell us more about the Science Festival is Dr. Tim Uttridge, Head of Identification here at Kew. That's a great job title. What does it mean? Thanks, Alice. So, in my department, we get all the new plants in from around the world. and We give them names where they're new and unknown to science. What a privilege. We're here in the carnivorous room. Carnivorous zone. The carnivorous zone with these lethal looking plants, tell us about them. So these are members of the genus Nepenthes and they are pitcher plants, they're insect eaters, so flies get attracted and go in. And this little one is a new species that we only described last year from Kew. You just, a whole new species that you just discovered? Yes, it's, it's been growing uh, in Indonesia for many years and we always thought it was one of these big ones. But when we got it to Kew, we were able to grow it up in our amazing nursery here and it always stayed small. So. It's not the same. So these are some of the things that people can discover this weekend at the Science Festival. What else can they do? Yes, you've got tours of the nursery, so you can see behind the scenes. You go in the herbarium where I work, seven million specimens. We've got scientists coming out the lab, pressing DNA, cloning cauliflowers, and we've got a whole range of things for little kids from under sevens all the way up to adults. Well, thank you very much for talking to us, Dr. Tim Mutteridge. Not really much time, three days, to get that all in, but it uh, opens on Friday until Sunday.